Okay, so right now, what we're looking at, a few different things here, I just want to talk about it. Uh, so first, we have our LED light. Now, I've talked in previous uh, videos, I don't like these LED lights. They, they were a good value. They give me quite a bit of light here. Um, what I've talked about is the industry is really focused on small area growing, usually for marijuana. This really needs to be refactored. And if I had time uh, this last summer when I was doing phase one and built all this, I would have refactored these lights or I would have built my own so that they were a lot longer and actually covered the entire bed. That would have been the right thing to do. But time was against us and we needed to get everything going. So we went with these. Now there might be a chance that I could actually salvage these parts and actually refactor the whole thing. But chances are I'll just need to uh, build something custom. Uh, so in the future, we might have a big The Real Martian store uh, blowout sale, and we'll sell these used. But anyway, I digress again. So uh, this particular light is connected to a light motor, and this light motor is on a rail. And the reason that we did that is normally for this particular bed, you would need three of these lights, and each of these lights is $200. So that's $600 for a grow bed. Uh, we're going to have over 30 grow beds in here. Uh, that's really not affordable. Most people aren't going to be paying that, right? No one would want to buy this. This would be too expensive. So what we did is we put it on a rail so it can move back and forth. And the light as well as this motor that moves it back and forth is all controlled by a microcontroller uh, inside of this box right here. Let's get a little closer. So there we are as an Arduino. Uh, on the, the back plate here. There we go, right here. And in the way back, back there, little green light on, that's a 12 volt power supply. And then that is connected to, uh, sorry, the 12 volt power supply is connected to a 12 volt relay as well as to the Arduino. And then right now what we have is a 120 volt relay that is connected to the motor and to the light through the receptacle here. So a little bit closer there, you can see everything, quite the mess. I know all of you electricians out there are gurgling right now and saying you're an idiot, uh, but that's the best that I knew how to do. So definitely some improvements that have been suggested and uh, I look forward to making those in our next uh, prototype. But right now, this is working, it's working very well. So what we need to do uh, is create a bunch of these boxes and put them throughout the building to house all of this automation in. And that'll keep it safe. These are outdoor boxes. They're keeping everything uh, waterproof, uh, doing a pretty nice job there. So I'm, I'm excited to get to building all these things. It just takes time to do all of it. So uh, let's see here. We went over Wi-Fi. Everything's controlled by Wi-Fi. The digester, the heating system. Oh, uh, we you've already seen a previous video, but we have the heaters that we put in here, and that all needs to be controlled as well. And I don't can't really get a great shot of anything, but I want to be able to monitor the outdoor temperature, uh, the outdoor humidity, the outdoor wind. Those are all great thermodynamic things to have, uh, as well as I'd like to evaluate for wind power in the future. Um, and then I need to monitor just inside of the building, but not inside of the tents here. I need to be able to monitor temperature and humidity as well. So I'll have a box that's set up to monitor just the environment inside of the system. I think I'd probably like to put in some cameras as well, uh, some time-lapse cameras that just take a shot and log it on the server, you know, just a little burst boom where are we at so we can actually see how the vegetables are doing. So kind of show you how we're so doing. Right now we're looking at production row and these are all radishes. And the white spots that you're probably seeing on the screen here, try to get closer, those are actually root hairs. That's not mold. Those are all supposed to be there. Uh, these are actually doing pretty decent. Looking pretty good. So if we can have a camera, for example, that sits something like this, or maybe something like that so you can see above it or to the side of it and then do some form of change recognition uh, hearkening back to my Air Force days 
we could probably really monitor how well everything's growing in here and actually come up with some nice ways of showing that on a display. So I'd be really excited to get that type of camera system in place and monitor each of the grow lanes individually so we know how well each one is doing. So let me give you another shot here. Let's see where we're at. We have moved everything into lane two as far as our microgreen production. We're still doing experiments on other lane, on lane three. Here are a bunch of peas that have been planted for just a few days. See them growing there. And then here, remember how worried I was about are we gonna make it or not? Check this out. This is all in the proper order here so that uh, each tray basically can get harvested every week, one tray per week. Here we are getting to the point where, look at that. We can harvest those just in about a week, I think. So we've gone through a lot to get to this point and uh, it looks like we are making it. It's, uh, it hasn't been as cold as what it's been lately. Uh, we're now uh, getting up into the 20s and 30s uh, Fahrenheit, so right around zero uh, and negative five Celsius. And uh, we're doing okay. The new heaters, uh, they're working. There's one of the heaters. It is connected to an Arduino that turns it on for 15 minutes every hour, and that's keeping all the fumes and everything down in here. Right now, you can't smell any diesel, uh, although I'm probably not the right one to ask about that. Uh, when I was younger, uh, I basically burned out my nose, so long story there. I can't really smell anything, but I can smell diesel, so I'm not just saying that. Anyway, uh, oh, I forgot to tell you one other thing here. Here we go. Each bed has a valve that controls the flow rate of water coming into it to fill up. And that goes right up to the control box. Ooh, and look at that. We're right on top of the hour. And it just turned on. Perfect. It's working great. We also have the fan up top that is all controlled through automation uh, through the Arduino system that we have. So uh, the heater and the fans both turn on at the same time and run for 15 minutes. So all in all, we're actually doing pretty good. Things are looking pretty good. Um, I think that's all I wanted to go over tonight. Let's see here, we went over Wi-Fi, we went over the digester, electrical, environmental, HVAC, the grow beds, the fish tanks. I forgot one thing. So right now we're doing this locally on our property and I talked about the Connex idea and how in the future we want to be able to take all of this and shove it down on the Connex and deploy it through different parts of the, the planet. And part of that is I want to be able to actually monitor these systems from a distance if people want us to help them monitor and keep it safe, uh, make sure it's working correctly. So I have two ways that I can do that and both of them are kind of fun and exciting. The first way is uh, internet over ham radio. Uh, if you get the right frequency, we can bounce some signals off the atmosphere and be able to do some ham radio internet kind of burst information like, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, oh, I'm not okay, um, and be able to engage with the customer there. Um, another way to do it is like through a 3G or 4G network to where we could actually have basically a SIM card that we deploy with each of these systems where we can actually monitor uh, information using actual 3D network technology and the internet uh, with a little more bandwidth, maybe we take some pictures, uh, be able to control the system. So that's one thing I almost forgot. Another thing uh, is the, uh, the monitoring system that goes with this. Um, I said I wanna be able to have you know, a wrist mount system. This is not it, obviously just a prop here where a person, the operator using the system, can actually walk up to a grow bed. The system knows which grow bed you're on. It knows if the grow bed has been planted because you've told it. And it basically, like if it's empty, it says, hey, I noticed you're next to this bed. 
do you want to, it's empty, do you want to plant it? And you say yes. And then it says, okay, uh, what do you want to plant? And you can scroll through a list of things and say plant tomatoes, okay? And the computer tells you plant your tomatoes at this spacing, here you go, and then let me know when you're done. And as soon as you hit I'm done, the sensor knows how much water it needs, how much light it needs, and it automatically optimizes the entire system to know what you uh, are growing there, and it grows it at the perfect condition. So um, there's a lot to work through on that particular idea, but that's one of the key visions that um, I really would like to see come to fruition. So as part of phase two, we'd like to be able to develop an Android app that would be that device. I want to use one of my Samsung Galaxy S3s, which is what I use for cameras. Uh, just happen to have two, three of them laying around. Uh, and, and program it with an app that allows us to start doing this, as well as monitoring like a, a stoplight chart, basically, you know, is it good, it's green, if it's going bad, it's yellow, if it's bad, it's red, and then you can start uh, clicking through things and being able to address that. And that app, not only would it work on your arm, of course, but you'd be able to put it in your pocket, take it with you, put it in your purse, take it with you wherever you went, and then get notifications that, hey, something's wrong. And I just want to point out, it's almost 50 degrees in here. It is really nice and warm right now. So I'm really happy with how well the system's performing as far as heat goes. Anyway, I think that's it. Uh, I probably forgot something because my mind is all over. I'll be honest, I've been having a little bit of a tough go lately. Uh, putting together the videos, putting together, uh, designing the project, working through all the inputs that people have given, trying to make the right decision. Uh, and then buying the stuff, getting it all put together, oh, taking care of the ranch, trying to be a good husband, as well as going to work, it kind of takes its toll. So uh, I'm, I missed my first video per day. I'm sorry, everybody, if you've been watching, but it was just, things just weren't going right uh, as far as all that stuff goes. Uh, so I got a little worn down there. Anyway, but we're back, we got videos going, and I'm really excited to get started on phase two. Um, it's just hard to get enough time to go do everything. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. We do have a GoFundMe and a Patreon account. The links are at the top of the screen on our main banner. You can get to them that way, or they're in the description uh, down below this video. Uh, and if you don't like to shop, but you want to see what all this stuff is, you can go to uh, www.therealmartianstore.com and you can see all the stuff that we bought and save you quite a bit of time there. So that's it. Hope you all have a great evening. This is Real Martian. Out.